Hey guys, this sermon today is called Plumbing Problems. Uh, let's, pr let's pray. Father, I praise you and I worship you, Lord God. I, I pray that, Lord, today your word will just speak so powerfully to every soul that is listening and will listening, oh God. I pray that you'll unclog our spirit, our spirit and our minds, and that we will stop um, the, plumbing, the plumbing problems before they begin. Oh Lord God, I pray that you will just go down into the marrow of our spirits, oh God, and dig up what we need to dig up, Lord Jesus. Unclog our ears, unclog our minds, unclog our spirits. I bless you and I praise you because you are God. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, so it's been about a week since I have done my last video. And... I was asking the Lord last night, Lord, what would you have me speak to your people? And I was, I was, I don't like to say watching church this morning, but I was in church this morning and the preacher was speaking and as, as he was speaking, the Lord began to speak to me. He says, um, this particular preacher was speaking about rain and, and the rain of God and the different uh, meanings of rain in the Bible. And he was speaking about rain. Wonderful sermon. It was Stephen Furtick's message uh, this morning. Uh, he was talking about wasted rain and how we uh, waste the word of God and uh, put other people, put other things and people to reign in our lives. Wonderful sermon. I will, I won't re-preach that sermon, but it, it was so. I sat there and I was listening and listening and listening, and the Lord said, <laughs> um, the Lord said, I want you to talk about plumbing problems. I said, I said, you want me to go from listening to the rain of God and all this stuff about wasting the rain and the word of God to talking about plumbing problems? Like, I'm like, this is so strange. So yes, I'm going to talk about plumbing problems. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was in the shower and um, uh, the first time I realized something was wrong with the drain uh, in the shower was when um, my attendant was like, um, like, um, she had figured out that something in the in the drain wasn't wasn't right and she thought it was just a little thing so she she swept it over with her foot and it turned out to be okay the second time i was in the shower with another person i began to hurt hear the water go, go glug, 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 like it was going down really slowly and it was like just really um, going down slowly. So I asked her, I asked her, is there something wrong with the drain? Because uh, um, my washroom commode that I sit on to shower and go to the bathroom faces the wall and you no know, faces the the away from the drain so 
my back faces away from the drain so I can't see the drain. So, but I heard something uh, going, uh, something like the water was, like the drain was clogged and she said, no, I don't think so. I think, well, it seems to be going down to me. And I said, okay. So third time, um, um, I was in the shower again and she said, uh, another person, this is the third person now, said, Rachel, there is something really wrong uh, with your, with the dream. And I was like, okay, the wa she said the water doesn't seem to be going down. So I called them and they fixed it and it took a really short time. And as the preacher was preaching this morning, I flashed back. He was preaching this beautiful sermon about the rain about the reign of God and how uh, the Lord was um, is going to uh, reign and he was preaching about the reign of God's word and then I flashed back to my plumbing problems uh, so it was and the Lord and the Lord began to speak speak to me just as the preacher was speaking uh, preaching, uh, he began to speak to me and say, that's what's happening with people. He said, the reason, he said, the reason people are not experiencing the rain and can't receive the word of God and don't even read the word of God or, or digest the word of God is they've got plumbing problems in their spirit and like your shower um the first sometimes the the clogs in our spirit start really slowly like i told you the first time um the person just um moves something with their, their foot and we they they thought the water was okay. The second time I heard something and I asked another person, is there something wrong with the drain? And she said, no, I think it's going down. The third time it was totally clogged. The water wasn't going down at all. And I had to, uh, um, fill out a work order to get the building to fix it. And he said, that is what happens spiritually. The reason why people can't receive the reign of God or the word of God that will produce in their life is because they've got things in there that will, that is clogging up their um, sp spiritual drain pipe. And, you know, um, when you have a pro plumbing problem, the water can't get through. So you can hear preachers talk about the reign of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God, how God is going to flood um, the your life with mercy and grace and love, but you can't receive it because it's clogged. But I'm coming as a plumber today. I'm co coming as your spiritual plumber today to help you declog your drain so when the water is coming in your life and when the rain of the word is coming in your life you can receive it because right now when the word is coming it's just running over 
it can't go down the drain. It's which is your heart. It can't go it can't go down and produce anything because it's so clogged so it stays on the surface and you know when you have a plumbing problem and it stays on the surface it just the more you you um turn the water on the more it just floods the the sur the surface and it and it doesn't go down to produce anything it just floods your bathroom and makes a big mess mess or your kitchen i remember i was having a pro a plumbing problem in the kitchen um and it got so no it wasn't me it was actually a friend of mine um she had a prop problem in her kitchen where something happened and the water went all over the floor and it was water damage it was a huge mess uh she had to vacate her apartment and it was just a huge mess and it took her weeks to to get it sorted out and that's what's happening with you guys like my friend you guys have got have gotten water overflow. You've listened to preachers these past few months um, over and over. You've listened to um, your favorite preachers and you just go from one to another to another to another. You have so much water that it's overflowing. And um, so, sometimes when when a great thing overflows and you get too much of it and you don't use it, it just creates a big mess. And that's what's going on with you guys, uh, with some of you guys. You've got so much words, so much rain, so much, um, so much in you that you're not doing anything with that it's creating a big mess. But the Lord is saying you have to declog what's go what's down your drain. You have to declog the hair. You have to uh, take one of those uh, plumbing things and declog what's going on. Like they had, like they had to do with my sink. They had to put one of those snake things in and declog all the dirt from the sink so the water could run down and do what it was supposed to do because there was so much dirt in there that um, the water was just not going down and I think and the Lord is saying that's what's happening in some of your spirits like you've got so much water there, so much word there, um, that it's flooding your spirit and creating a big mess. He's saying you have to declog it. And the way you declog it is with truth. You have to use the truth of God's word to declog what's been clogging your spiritual drain. And so if unworthiness is clogging your spiritual drain, for example, um, the word of God that says, greater is he that is, in you, that is in me than he that is in the word world is spiritual draino. It declogs what's going on. So whatever's clogging up your drain, use the word to, as draino to declog de it. If fear is clogging up your spiritual drain, use the word to declog it that says, um, 
uh, I'm with you. He says over and over again in his written word, God says, I am with you. There's no need to fear. And we need to go down this spiritual plumbers. And no, we need to let the Lord as a spiritual plumber go down and declog our spiritual drains so we can receive what's been blocked. A lot of people are spiritually, their drain is so full that it's bursting and it's overflowing, but they're so blocked with a lot of negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative patterns that they can't receive the rain or or the water of God's word. So when you when you hear that, oh God's gonna flood your spirit today, God's going to come in like a flood, you can't receive that because there's no more room. You're either clogged with hurt or shame or negative emotions or you're clogged with too much word that you can't hold anymore. With negative emotions, negative stuff, you have to get rid of it. And the only way to do that is to counteract the negative stuff with the word of God. So for whatever you're struggling with, find a scripture that um, could counteract that. And you'll see eventually when you start speaking God's word over your thoughts, God's word will come second nature. And the other problem is some of you are so overflowing with word and not doing anything with it that it's just sitting there and also clogging your, your drink. And the solution for that, the Lord is saying right now, it's action. He wants you to stop YouTubing every single preacher and every single person and stop being a preacher chaser and be a God chaser and do what he's called you to do. You, you have too much word in you. You have too much purpose in you. You're getting too fat. You need to exercise those word muscles that he's been putting in you. And you, you need to work it out. You need to work the word. He's saying, work it, honey, work it. You need to work the word that you've been uh, feasting on. Like, some people are, are going from um, cause online preaching is so accessible, they're going from here to here to here, this preacher to that preacher, this conference to that conference to that conference, and they're getting so fat they're not, that they're not doing, they're getting so full of water, but there's no spiritual bathroom to let it out. The spiritual bathroom to let it out is through action. The, the Lord saying he wants you to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Jesus talked about uh, three people in the Gospels. I forget which Gospel it is. He talked about the people that hear the word and it just goes over their head and they don't do anything with it. And the people who, who hear the word and say, oh yeah, good word, good word, and they say it, but they don't do anything with it. And he also talks about people who hear the word and apply action to the word. The word is nothing unless you apply it. So unclog your drain today. And it's not only clogged with um, hurt and pain and all that and all those negative emotions and the positive 
word overload. It's clogged with you. Some of us, our spiritual drains are clogged with ourselves. Like, and it might not be consciously, but it's there. We're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about all what we have to do. We're worrying about our families. We're worrying about the pandemic. And he's saying, I need you to unclog your spiritual drain with you. And the best way to do it is to serve others. You, you need to start serving others, even online. Being, being a friend to someone you know who's alone. Uh, Zooming someone who uh, you know can use a friend. Calling someone who you know can use a friend. That's the best way to get rid of selfishness. The best way to get rid of selfishness and to uh, get rid of that me mentality is to start serving others. Even in little ways, you don't have to now leave your house to serve others. There are tons of online opportunities through churches and through uh, community organizations that you can volunteer to serve others. And when you get your mind off of yourself and start serving others, God takes care of you. He says he went... He says uh, that he he will take care of you. He's obligated to take care of you, but just stop stop focusing on yourself. Stop worrying about yourself and serve others. And as you serve others, that will in turn serve you. It's it's the law of reciprocity. As you give to others, God will give to you. Because he's saying that he's searching to and fro for people who are givers. And when he sees you're a giver to others, he'll be a giver to you. And things that you were worried about will just... um. He'll solve them. He'll solve them for you. And some of them, you won't even realize he's solving them for you. So, um, he's saying the best way to get rid of selfishness, the the, the best way to declog your spiritual, emotional drain of selfishness is to serve others. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to solve our problem and problems, Lord. Go, do, grow, go down as a spiritual uh, plumber and help us to declog, to declog our drain so your water and your rain uh, could come down and do what it's called to do. Because as the preacher said this morning, uh, every drop is called to do something. Every drop is for a purpose, Lord God. Show us what the purpose of your reign is and help us to declog and declutter our drains so we can hear you. Help us to quiet the voices that are telling us all these negative things about ourselves, about others, about our situations. And help us to focus on you, Lord God. I declare from this moment on that we will not have plumbing problems. That we will every so often go di- uh, let you go down as a plumber in our spiritual drains. And help us uh, to take out all the excess water that we don't need either by action or by by um, letting you solve our issues Lord God we will not run from issues we will stay there and let you work on us Lord God help us realize that we are a work in progress and, and we are 
progressing day by day. We love you. We give you praise and glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. So guys, I will see you later. Thank you for listening. Bye. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you come. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love. The Lord is saying, before I sign off, the Lord is saying, there are people today that are not only not receiving the word of God because of a clogged spiritual drain, not only not receiving, um, not only not full of um, the too full of the word of God or too full of themselves or too full of issues, but they they can't receive the love of God. Their drains are too clogged to receive the love of God. And the Lord is saying, I want to declutter your drain first and foremost to let you have room to receive my love, to let you have room to know that all those negative voices that said you were nothing, that you were less, then because you have a disability or because you have something, all those voices, all those voices were lie were lies. And God, we we receive your love today. So declutter our dream so first and foremost we can receive your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Like a flood. Like a flood, we receive your love when you come. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love. Let's think about his love. Let's think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought us through. For as high the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that brought us through for as high as the heavens above so great is the measure of our father's love great is the measure of our father's love the lord wants me to say today you are worthy of his love. You are worthy of God's love. You are worthy of God's love. I don't care who said what, but you are worthy of God's love. And there's nothing more you can do, nothing less you can do to des deserve or not deserve the Father's love. And the Father's love is is nothing to do with salvation. I'll say that again. The Father's love is not nothing to do with salvation. He gave his son because he loves you. 
not so that uh, you'd have to rec uh, you receive him to gain his love. No, he loves you because he loves you. He loves you because you are. And there is nothing that you have to do to deserve his love. And it is because he loves you that you do that you do things because he loves you. It's and it's not to work for his love because you don't have to work for his love. And I'm telling you, it's not even salvation. He loves everyone just so much beyond human understanding. And it's not even a salvation thing. It's just who he is. God is love. He is love. You don't have to do anything to get him to love you. You don't even have to be saved or know the Lord to get him to love you. He loves you and that's it. He doesn't love you because you sing. He doesn't love you because you do real estate. He doesn't love you because you're a mom. He loves you just because you are. He loves you just because he made you. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to put that in. So we receive your love today, God. Fill us with your love and fill us with your peace and fill us with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. As I sign off today, receive the love of God. Receive the love of God. Bask in his love today. Bask in his love today. Let his love fill you. Close your eyes and let his love fill you. We love you, Jesus. We know you love us, God. Help us receive that truth. We receive your love. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love when you come. Like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love. Like a flood, like a flood. We receive your love when you come like a flood, like a flood. We receive your love in the stillness you love me. In the stillness we love you. Help us receive your love. We don't feel worthy today, Lord God. Help me receive your love. Before we receive anything else, Lord, today we receive your love.
Let love overflow in our hearts on this day. Let love overflow in our hearts on this day. Let love overflow in our hearts on this day. Let love overflow in our hearts on this day. Let love overflow in our hearts on this day for you and for Oh, she Lord, we praise you, God. We praise you, God. We worship you, God. We welcome you, God. Overflow in our hearts today. Let your love take control of every broken place. Let love overflow. In our hearts on this day, let love overflow. In our hearts on this day, for you and for others, for ourselves. And Let love in our hearts overflow on this day. Let love in our hearts overflow on this day. Let love in our hearts overflow on this day for you and for others, for ourselves, and every broken place. Let love.